Let's go. How you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Today's job we have a 100 ton jack cylinder rod that's come in for repair. So this is off an Edmo mining jack, which is built here in Australia. It is a hydraulic jack, very similar to what you use for lifting up a car. This is their 100 ton model. They do go up to 200 tons. These are mainly used in a repair shop on a mine site for lifting dump trucks, dozers, excavators, and other mining equipment. So this rod is actually used to lift the truck. Hydraulic pressure is applied to the bottom of the piston, which extends the rod out and will lift the machine. So as you can see, this rod has got a few dints and scratches in it. The dints are most likely likely caused from people leaving the jack extended, going to put them under a machine and they run into a component like a diff or a wheel end or a trailing arm, something like that. The scratches that go around the diameter of the rod, that is due to rotational force. And that is when they attempt to lift a machine, they don't have 100% contact on the head of the cylinder and the cylinder spins in order to try and find the path of least resistance. So they do rotate inside the barrel and that does cause scratches because there are no wear bands on the piston or in the gland. Not only do they get dints in the chrome, but they also get damage done to the very top of the cylinder. And that is generally because they don't put the cap in there. There is a cap that is designed to sit inside the cylinder rod in order to grip onto whatever is being lifted. Someone has obviously forgotten to put the cap on there. They've attempted to lift something and they have bruised the hole in the end of the rod. Because of people not taking care, these things do get damaged. They are in a pretty tough environment. They might only get used once or twice a day, but they are under extreme tension when they are being used. So this cylinder rod would be a very good candidate for re-chroming, but because there is so much damage in the end of the rod where that cap goes into, we would have to bore that out, weld it up and machine it back to size. The customer already got a quote to have it chromed and then got a quote from me to remanufacture it. It is here, so we were obviously cheaper. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get it in the press so we can remove the piston from the rod. Oh. 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 Oh, good. So that piston came off nice and easy. I needed to do that so I can use the piston to test the thread on the new rod. So we're gonna get onto machining up the new rod.
So this is our new piece of material. It is induction hardened chrome bar. It is six inches in diameter and 550 mil long. The original rod is not induction hardened. It is just chromed six inch rod. I'd say they do that for cost reasons. They probably don't expect people to leave the jack up and run them into things under machinery. But I've decided to make the new one out of induction hardened material because it's gonna be a lot more resilient to getting knocked and banged around. So we've got a bit of work to do to each end of this. First thing I'm gonna start on is machining the top of the rod where the cap goes in. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a 50mm twist drill to drill out the end of the rod and then I'm going to use a boring bar to machine it to its final size.
Righto, so I've got that end completed. What I need to do now is flip it over so I can start machining the end where the piston goes on. Hang on, George. Oh wait, there's another one. There's two in here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with a ceramic insert to remove the induction hardened layer and then I can rough it down using a carbide insert.
I've got that rough down, now I'm going to take the finishing cut. Now I'm just going to reduce the diameter for where the threads are. Now I'm going to use a 5mm radius grooving tool to put in a thread relief. So now that that's all done, it's time to thread it.
So all the machining's done, there is one more thing that I need to do. If I make a mistake on the next bit, I could potentially throw this in the bin. So what we need to do is get it out of the lathe and go get it set up in the press again. So the last thing I need to do is drill and tap the hole for the grub screw, which locks the piston from turning on the rod. This is where everything can sort of go wrong. I'm going to be drilling a new hole. I'm not even going to attempt to try and pick up the existing one. That is just a surefire way of snapping a drill. And trying to start a tap on a hole where you've got threads on one side and not on the other, that's a pretty good way of just messing it all up. Because I'm going to be drilling and tapping a hole through the thread, you will end up with swarf and metal particles that will find their way in between them. You can end up with galling, and if you go to undo the piston again, you can lock them totally and end up throwing them both in the bin. Righto guys, so that's this job done. It's pretty basic, pretty standard, pretty easy. We'll get this out of the press, get it wrapped up and get it back to our customer so I can get the jack reassembled. Thanks for watching.
Mm. It is banana. <laughs> this is often Edmo mining jack. So they are, oh, fuck me. And that is when they attempt to lift them. Li mm. Oh, for fuck's sake. So the piston came off nice and easy. Now what I, oh wait, is that it? Okay. So let's grab the new piece of rod. Help. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I wore it too. Wow. Coolant shower. Lovely. All right, so I've got that rough down. Oh, fuck. How'd you say that? And now I'm just going to remove the... Oh, fuck. And now I'm just going to reduce the diameter for where the threads are. Now I'm just going to reduce this diameter. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Curtis's quick change tool holder. You know, like if you got rid of this and had another tool with your carbide to do that quicker. That'd probably be a lot better, right? Eh? Imagine that. Oh, now you got to change the insert again. Just give me a minute while I change this insert, Cam. I don't have another tool yet. <laughs> Thought about it. It was a great idea. Something always hurt my feelings. Oh, I've got to change the insert. Oh my god. I'm gonna check my thread pitch after my scratch pass. <laughs> We're good. Right, oh guys, so that's this job done. Pretty basic, pretty standard, pretty easy. So I'll get. Oh, fuck off, Trey. <laughs> Seriously, man. Thanks for watching. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why can't you read my mind? What do you want me to do? Just start getting it out. Oh, right. Yeah. This palette's really cute. Yeah. Jesus. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Stupid thing. I'm here. Oh. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Oh. Oh, he's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting edge zoo. <laughs> Stay. 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 Hey, mindless. <laughs> hey. <laughs>